Hola a todos. Bienvenido de vuelta a Footy Leagues Around the World. So seo anfitrial Hayen. Hoje che al presento Brazil. Footy Leagues Around the World. Footy Leagues. Heck yeah. What is there to say about football in Brazil? Not only is it the country's most popular sport, but it is also part of the country's national identity. Brazil has won five World Cups and has a lot, a lot of domestic football. Let's dive in. Brazil is the first country that we've covered on footy leagues around the world that actually has two football pyramids. The first is the National Pyramid, which is organized by the Brazilian Football Confederation, also known as the CBF. The second are the state pyramids, which are organized by various state football federations. Let's first take a look at the National Pyramid, which has four tiers. At the top is the Campeonato Brasileiro Serie A. This league is made up of 20 teams. The season has historically lasted from April to December, though this year the season started in May. Teams play 38 games, or each other twice, until a winner is crowned. At the end of the season, the top four teams will qualify for a spot in the Copa Libertadores group stage, the top club competition in South America. Teams 5 and 6 will qualify for the Copa Libertadores second stage, and teams 7 through 12 qualify for the Copa Sudamerica group stage, South America's equivalent of the Europa League. The bottom four teams at the end of the season are relegated to the Campeonato Brasileiro Serie B. In Serie B, there are also 20 teams. Each team plays 38 games, and the season has historically lasted from April to November. Four best teams at the end of the season are promoted, while the bottom four teams are relegated to the Campeonato Brasileiro Serie C. In Serie C, there are also 20 teams, though teams are split into two groups, A and B, depending on where they are in the country. From everything I've seen, Group B is typically made up of teams in the southern and western parts of the country, while Group A is generally made up of teams in the northern and eastern parts of the country. Teams in each group play 18 games, with the season historically lasting from April to October. After these 18 games, the top four teams in each group meet in what is known as the second stage. Teams are once again placed into two groups, this time not dependent on geography, four teams per group, and each team plays six games, or their group members, twice. The top team from each group then meets in a two-leg final to determine who are the kings of Serie C. No matter who wins the final, each team is automatically promoted to Serie B, along with the two second place teams from the second stage. The bottom two teams from each initial group of 10 are relegated to the Campeonato Brasileiro Serie D. Lastly in Brazil's national pyramid is Serie D, and this is when it gets a little different. Serie D is made up of 68 teams, most of which secure a place in the competition based on their placement in their state's tournament, from the year before. Let me explain. In Brazil, there are 26 states and one federal district for the country's capital of Brasilia. Each year, Brazil's national football governing body, the CBF, ranks these 27 federations based on a coefficient, similar to one you'd find in any number of Latin American football leagues. This coefficient is tied to the number of teams from each state or district playing in the nation's top four national leagues. For example, the state of Sao Paulo is currently ranked first, with 17 teams playing in the top four leagues of Brazil. The same coefficient is used in Serie D to determine how many teams from each state are able to compete in the competition. At the top is Sao Paulo with four teams, below them are eight states with three teams, and the rest of the states and districts have two teams. For those of you proficient in math, you'll realize that this equals 64 teams. The last four teams are added from those that are relegated from Serie C. Now let's take a look at how these teams are selected to play in Serie D. Every year, each state or district in Brazil hosts a statewide tournament, typically called the Campeonato, then the name of the state. In smaller states like Acre, the winner and the runner-up of the state's tournament qualify for a spot in Serie D. In larger states like Rio de Janeiro, the three teams that qualified for Serie D in 2021 actually finished in 4th, 6th, and 8th in the state's 2020 Campeonato Carioca. This is because the teams in 1st and 2nd, Flamengo and Fluminense, are already playing in Serie A. 3rd place, Volta Edonda, 
is playing in Serie C. Fifth place, Botafogo, is playing in Serie B. And seventh place, Vasco da Gama, is also playing in Serie B. We'll get more into these state tournaments later. Back to Serie D. Within this league, teams are split into eight groups, generally based on geography, with eight teams in each group. Teams play 13 games before the top four teams in each group move on to the round of 32. After teams are drawn based on region, teams face each other in a two-legged tie before repeating this in a round of 16, a quarterfinal, and a semifinal, and eventually a two-legged final. This year, the Serie D season will last from May to November. Four teams that make the semifinals are automatically promoted to Serie C. There is technically no relegation from this level because each team has to win a place in the league again in their state's tournament. Which brings us to the state pyramid. There are four tiers in this pyramid, starting with the state championships top divisions, then second divisions, third divisions, and fourth divisions. Because of economic and geographical issues, as well as long distances between important cities in Brazil, Brazilian people have developed a strong, competitive culture within their states. While these state tournaments aren't national tournaments, teams, players, and fans still take them pretty seriously. All 26 states in the federal district have at least one state football tournament. Most actually have two, with the largest states like Rio and Sao Paulo actually having four. Here's how they work. Take the Sao Paulo State Tournament, for example, which is called the Campeonato Paulista. The top state tournament in this state is called the Campeonato Paulista Serie A1. In 2021, this tournament lasted from February to May with 16 teams split into four groups, Group A through D. In each group, teams play each other four times. After these 12 games, the two teams that have the worst records of all 16 are automatically relegated to the Campeonato Paulista Serie A2. Then the top two teams of each group move on to a single elimination knockout tournament. In 2021, Sao Paulo beat Palmeiras in a two-legged final. Now before 2021, this knockout tournament was all that these state leagues had. Ah, but not this year. In the Campeonato Paulista Serie A1 specifically, the teams that didn't make the knockout stage, but weren't bad enough to get automatically relegated, played for what is translated as the Interior Trophy. This acted as a standard single elimination tournament. Why was this tournament created? I have no idea. What does the team get for winning the interior trophy? No clue. Here's what I do know. At the end of the state tournament, an overall table is created. Within the Campeonato Paulista, the top three teams that aren't already playing in a national league are promoted to Serie D. As we move down the tiers of the state tournaments, the format generally remains the same. Teams play a set number of games, the bottom two teams are automatically relegated, while the rest of the teams in the top half of the table qualify for a knockout tournament. At a certain point, depending on what state you're in, there stops being relegation from these state leagues. As a matter of fact, most of these teams, even those in the lowest tiers of the state tournaments, are still considered semi-pro. Only amateur teams that have been given specific approval from each state's football association are allowed to participate. At the amateur level, there are even more competitions that we just don't have time to get into. One thing to remember about these state tournaments, however, is that most last from January to May. All state and national tournaments are back as of October 2021 after many delays and even some cancellations in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which unfortunately has hit Brazil fairly hard. If you thought four national tournaments and numerous state tournaments were enough for Brazilians, oh how foolish you are. The country is also home to the Copa do Brasil, an annual cup competition played between 92 teams. In 2021, these 92 participants included 70 state champions and runners-up. The top 10 teams ranked by the CBF, think of the big guys like Flamengo, Grimiero, teams like that. And finally, last year's winner of the Serie B and the eight teams that qualified for the Copa Libertadores. These 92 teams are split into eight groups and begin a single elimination knockout tournament. After three rounds, the top 16 teams move into a double leg elimination tournament until a champion is eventually crowned. The winning club automatically qualifies for the Copa Libertadores. The Copa do Brasil has been going strong since 1989, with Cruzeiro winning the most titles at six. Brazil also has a Super Copa do Brasil, a single game that pits the winner of the Brasileiro Serie A and the Copa do Brasil from the year before against each other. 
Flamengo has won the most Supercopas with two titles. Along with numerous men's football competitions in Brazil, there's also a significant amount of women's competitions. The top club tournament for women is called the Campeonato Brasileiro de Futebol Feminino, which is broken up into three tiers, Serie A through Serie A 3. The Serie A season lasts from April to September with 16 teams facing off against each other. Each team plays 15 games before the top eight teams advance to the quarterfinals. In the quarterfinals, teams are randomly matched up against each other and play in a two-legged knockout tournament until a winner is crowned. The winner and the runner-up of the league automatically qualify for a spot in the Copa Libertadores Femenina, South America's top club competition for women. Since that competition was started in 2009, Brazilian clubs have been incredibly dominant, with Brazilian side Sao Jose winning the most titles with three. The tournament's 2020 winner, Ferro Villarreal, is also from Brazil. The Campeonato Brasileiro Feminina Serie A started in 2013 and has been won most by Corinthians, who have three titles. After the Serie A season is over, the bottom four teams are relegated to the Brasileiro Serie A 2. That league is made up of 36 teams, split into six groups of six teams. Teams play everyone in their group once before the top two teams in each group and the top four third place teams move on to the round of 16, which starts a two-legged knockout tournament. After the playoffs, the top four teams are promoted to the Serie A, while the bottom 20 teams are relegated to Serie A 3. The Serie A 3 is brand new to the women's game as of 2021. Its first season, which will be 2022, will include 32 teams, including one representative from the country's 27 states and districts, one club from the best state football federation, and the top four teams that aren't already playing in the Serie A 1 or Serie A 2, based on CBF male rankings. Football teams in Brazil are located throughout the country, though most of the more dominant teams can be found in the country's largest cities, including Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo. Most of the country's top clubs are also located along the country's coast. Some of the largest, nicest, and newest football stadiums in South America can be found in Brazil thanks in part to a huge stadium building campaign that the country underwent when it hosted the 2014 FIFA World Cup. Some of the most notable stadiums in the country include Estadio Maracana in Rio, Estadio Nacional in Brasilia, Arena Fonte Nova in Salvador, and so many more. Seriously, there are just too many to name. While these stadiums were a massive boost to football infrastructure in the country, many have unfortunately never reached their capacities after the World Cup. It's fairly common to turn on a Brazilian game and see a half-empty stadium. Still, I'm sure they are sights to behold. As Brazil is home to one of, if not the, top football competition in South America, its teams have also been very competitive in continental competitions. It's not uncommon to see a Brazilian club or two competing in the final stages of the Copa Libertadores, if not winning the whole thing. Three Brazilian clubs have won the competition three times, while seven teams have won it at least once. In fact, the last winner of the competition was Sao Paulo side Palmeiras. Brazilian teams have been equally as competitive in other competitions, including the Copa Sudamericana, the Comebol Recopa Sudamericana, and even the FIFA Club World Cup. Because football is taken so seriously in Brazil, it should come as no surprise that some of the best derbies in South America, if not the entire world, can be found in the country. Some of Brazil's most notable derbies include the Paulista Derby between Corinthians and Palmeiras, the Fla Flu between Flamengo and Fluminense, the Grenal between Grêmio and Internacional, the Choquehe between Palmeiras and Sao Paulo, and the Clásico Mineiro between Atlético Mineiro and Cruzeiro. These games are sure to produce great spectacles on and off the pitch. There are also hundreds of other great derbies in Brazil, but we just don't have time to get into into all of them, so let's just move on. Football was introduced to Brazil by a Scottish expat named Thomas Donahoe. First football match played in Brazil was in April of 1894, played on a pitch marked out by Donahoe next to his workplace in Bangu. In 1888, Sao Paulo Athletic Club was founded, the first football and sports club in Sao Paulo. On December 14, 1901, the Liga Paulista de Futebol was founded, organizing its own championship, the Campeonato Paulista, in 1902. After that, other football competitions began popping up elsewhere in the country. 
1914, the Brazilian Football Confederation was formed, but it wasn't until 1971 when the current format of the Campeonato Brasileiro was established. A similar format, the Taça Brazil, was established earlier in 1959. There's been some iteration of a top-flight men's competition in Brazil held every year since 1959, with Sao Paulo side Palmeiras having the most league titles with 10. Following closely in second is Santos with eight top flight titles. Even though top flight football was delayed last year in Brazil due to the COVID-19 pandemic, a tournament was eventually played and won by Rio de Janeiro side Flamengo. The state of Sao Paulo has been home to the most top flight winners at 32 with 27 runner-ups. The state of Rio de Janeiro is in second with 17 winners and 10 runner-ups. There have been 17 total teams that have won a top flight title in Brazil. Starting in August 1941, women's football was banned in Brazil by a new law stating that violent sports, such as football, rugby, and boxing, were incompatible with women's capabilities. Despite the ban, women's teams continued to play informally for the next four decades, gaining increased popularity through the 1970s and early 1980s. The movement to legalize women's football, which coincided with the feminist movement in Brazil, eventually led to the termination of the law on April 11, 1983. Brazil eventually founded a women's football association in 2007. Brazil has obviously had a storied history at World Cups, including five tournament titles. The player with the most top flight appearances in Brazilian history is famed Cruzeiro goalkeeper Fabio with 595. The leading top flight goal scorer in Brazilian history is Roberto Ginamichi with 190 goals. He scored most of his goals in the 70s and 80s with Rio de Janeiro side Vasco da Gama, named after famed Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama. As far as rules go in top flight Brazilian football, teams can only register five foreign players on their Campeonato Brasileiro rosters. However, for other competitions throughout the year, teams can have more than five foreign players. Speaking of players, even though clubs can have up to five foreign players on their roster, most teams don't, sticking to only two or three. This is a testament to just how much football talent there is domestically within Brazil. For those players who aren't from Brazil, foreign players mostly hail from neighboring South American countries like Argentina, Uruguay, Paraguay, Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador, Chile, and Peru. There are also a few players in Brazil with dual nationalities, Brazilian, of course, being the first, and others like Italian, Bolivian, Spanish, Belarusian, Costa Rican, American, and South Korean being just a few others. While some members of the Brazilian national team play their domestic football in Brazil, most do not. In fact, many of these players are some of the most recognizable names in world football. Neymar, Gabriel Jesus, I don't have to tell you who they are, you know. You can find Brazilian players playing in all of the top leagues in Europe and around the world. In fact, it's hard to find a top flight league where a Brazilian is not currently playing. This is a topic that's incredibly interesting to me and I might just do a video about it later. But for now, let's move on. For those who can't go to games, you are very much in luck. Within Brazil, fans have four different ways to watch live games as of October 2021. TV Globo is a free over-the-air channel that broadcasts one to three games per week, usually on Wednesday nights and Sunday afternoons. The subscription-based Sport TV broadcasts two games per week between teams that it has contracts with. Games on Sport TV are usually broadcasted simultaneously on Premiere. The subscription-based TNT, owned by Turner Broadcasting, also shows two games per round between teams it has contracts with. The most games can be found broadcasted on Premiere, where fans can see up to nine pay-per-view matches per round. All teams but Atletico Paranaense can be found on Premiere. Outside of Brazil, more than a dozen countries have TV channels that broadcast at least one Brazilian Serie A game per week. For those that have cut the cord, there's also Fanatis. Starting in 2020, this subscription-based app began broadcasting all Serie A and Serie B games in Brazil, giving these leagues the widest international showcase they ever have. Fanatis, by the way, is a great service to watch all kinds of great football, and I'll definitely be doing a video about it in the near future. For those who would rather watch highlights on YouTube, there's a great channel simply called G that has complete highlights of every game in Serie A and Serie B. These highlights are in crisp HD and they're a great starting point, 
if you've ever wondered what domestic football is like in Brazil. If you know anywhere else to find highlights or live streams of any leagues in Brazil, you know what to do. Leave a comment or a link below. Well, that's it for Brazil. As always, thank you for watching and thanks for rocking with us for all these years. I know it's taken a while, but we've finally made it. If you want to check out more Footy League stuff, obviously this is our YouTube channel. We also have a Facebook page, Footy Leagues Around the World, and we are newly on TikTok. So how can we follow up a giant like Brazil? Well, by going to an absolute minnow in the footballing world. Coming up next is the British Virgin Islands.